guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Becca and today we have a big old summer book haul. So these, it's a, it's a summer book haul because we're in summer now, it's the beginning of summer. But these are all of the books that I've acquired from the end of April all through May and the majority of June. As yeah, I've acquired quite a few actually, considering my first book haul of the year was only two months ago and that covered like pretty much the first four months of the year. We have quite a few because I have 28 books that I'm going to be talking about today. So as usual I am going to be splitting this down into sections. This time we have ebooks, books I bought second hand, books I bought new, gifts that I've received, books that I've received from authors and also subscription box books. So let us just crack straight on starting off with my ebooks as usual so I don't forget them. So I only actually bought one ebook during this period and that was The Willful Princess and the Piebald Prince by Robin Hobb. This is a novella in the realm of the Eldlings world. It is, it was released in 2000 and like past 2010 but it is recommended that you read it after the first trilogy so you can read it either after the Farsia trilogy or after the Life Ship Traders as long as you read it before you go into the Tawny Man series because while it's not completely necessary it does give you a little bit of context for one of the legends of the world that they discuss quite frequently in in the Tawny Man series. So this is a story told in two parts. We have the story of the Willful Princess and the story of the Piebald Prince which are tied together and it is essentially about how a certain magic used to be regarded a certain way and how it got to how it is regarded in the current timeline of the book where it is seen as something bad to have. I've already read this one as well and I very much enjoyed it. So this segues us nicely into the books that I bought second hand. I have two of these and they are Golden Fool and Fool's Fate by Robin Hobb. These are books two and three in the Tawny Man series which are part of the realm of the Eldlings again and I adore these massive paperbacks in the old style editions. Sadly these are the last books I'm going to be able to get in these old style covers. I'm really really sad about it and they'll probably be the last big paperbacks I am able to get but I do have the mass markets of all the books that come before these ones and the text is really really small in them so I do definitely prefer these because they're a lot easier to read and they're also like reasonably floppy as well. So this is the second of the Fitz trilogies in the Realm of the Eldlings and the third series in the Realm of the Eldlings overall and it is the continuation of the story of the main character in the Farsia trilogy who is Fitz Chivalry of Farsia. He is the bastard son of the prince in waiting and his maternal grandfather drops him off on the steps of the keep and says that he would like him to return to his father but during Fitz's journey as he he returns to bookkeep to be reunited with his father. He finds out that his father has actually abdicated the throne and moved to the countryside so nobody really knows what to do with Fitz and he is mainly raised by the stable master Burrick up until he comes of an age where the king starts to take interest in him and decides that he should be trained to become the royal assassin. So I haven't read either of these yet but this is my book club catch up book club's book for May and June and this one is the book for July in August so while I could get them both from the same seller I got these on eBay I decided to pick both of them up because I know I'm going to be reading them very soon. For the books that I received from authors this month I received two e-arcs the first of them was Nation of the Sun by H.R. Moore. I am also currently reading this one at this point and it is an adult fantasy romance that follows a young woman called Amari who is visited just before her wedding day by this mysterious guy who says he works for the government and wants her to to come and work with him but that is not actually the truth. He is actually a demon and so is she. They are both soulmates. This book focuses a lot on reincarnation and he is trying to get her to awaken and recover her memory so that she remembers who it is that she actually is and can help them with this big war between the demon nations. I received two books from KJ Sutton. The first one was an e-arc and that was of her surprise release straight on till morning. I have read this one this one is a new adult Peter Pan retelling where Wendy's family have fallen on hard times. Her father has turned to alcoholism and her mother has essentially gone into hiding like she just will not get out of bed. She's kind of lost the will to do anything which leaves Wendy as the eldest with the responsibility of trying to make ends meet and also taking care of her brothers. She is also visited quite regularly by the mysterious Peter Pan and they have a little bit of an attraction between them but one day an affluential lady approaches Wendy and says that she 
will pay her a lot of money, money that could save her family, providing that Wendy kills Peter. So Wendy heads to Neverland with the intention of killing Peter, but um, she has to fight her growing attraction to him to be able to do so. The other book that I received from Kelsey was a copy of Deadly Dreams. This is the third installment in the Fortuna Swan series, which as you guys know is one of my favourite series and I would have purchased myself a copy of this ages ago. It was released in December and the paperback was released a few months ago, I think. But Kelsey wanted to send me a little like promo box and a paperback copy of this that is signed. So thank you so much Kelsey for sending me this. The Fortuna Swan series is a fairy romance that follows a young woman called Fortuna whose brother went missing two years prior to the start of the story and he disappeared without a trace and she's at the point where she kind of given up hope that she will ever find him. But then she is approached by a very powerful and alluring fairy male who says that he can take her directly to her brother providing that she marries him. Moving on to the books I bought new we'll start off with the ones that I have a few copies of and that is Realm Breaker by Victoria Aveyard. So this one is the Waterstones edition with red sprayed edges and this one is the Fairy Loose edition with grey sprayed edges. It also has a foiled sword under the dust jacket and is signed by Victoria Aveyard. So I didn't necessarily mean to have two copies of this. I do actually have three. I have a standard edition as well. But what happened is when this was announced, I was placing a Waterstones order. So I put my pre-order for this book because I really love the Red Queen series. I put the pre-order in with my order of all other stuff I was pre-ordering. And then they announced the Waterstones edition, but I couldn't cancel my original order because you can't cancel individual items. You have to do the whole order. And it still had a book in it that I pre-ordered that is sold out so if I cancelled the order I wouldn't be able to reorder that edition. So I ended up placing another order with a pre-order of the Waterstones edition because I knew the Fairy Loot edition was coming out but there was no guarantee that I would be able to get my hands on this one. Like I said I do really love the Red Queen series so I anticipate really enjoying this one as well because it is a multi-perspective high fantasy but if I don't out of the three I'm definitely getting rid of the standard edition I've currently given it to Ryan because he didn't have a copy but he has since got his hands on the Waterstones edition so the, the standard edition is irrelevant now I'll probably sell that and I will keep the fairy loot edition if I don't end up loving this as much as I anticipated. I don't actually know too much about this I bought it because I love Red Queen but on the back it says a squire the survivor of a failed quest an immortal timeless and unfathomable an assassin skilled and heartless an old sorceress holding secrets behind her teeth and a pirate's daughter the ward's last hope. The heroes are gone but the fight to save the world has only just begun. I also ordered myself a copy of Crown of Gilded Bones by Jennifer L. Armentrout when it was released and I have already read this one. Did not enjoy it as much as I have the other installments in the Blood and Ash series but this one is book three and Blood and Ash is a new adult high fantasy romance series that follows a young girl called Poppy who is the maiden which means that she she is never to be looked upon and never to be touched. She can't experience pleasure and she's pretty much kept in captivity. Although it is thinly veiled as like a, you are blessed by the gods and you are going to ascend and you are a really important member of the community, but she's essentially hidden away. And the love interest in here is a very skilled guard called Hawk, who hasn't been around in the city for too long, but his skills are so impressive that he is very quickly promoted through the ranks and ends up becoming one of the guards that is tasked with guarding Poppy until she ascends. I then have a thriller that I pre-ordered which is The Murder of Graham Catton by Katie Lowe. In the US I believe this is called Possession and I do actually prefer the title and the cover of the US version but I got this one because I absolutely adore The Furies by Katie Lowe. It was one of my favourite books of a 2019. This one is very different to the Furies though. It was about a woman whose husband was murdered 10 years ago. The murderer was convicted, the case is closed, but a new podcast called Conviction has taken a particular interest in this case and they are particularly studying the main character who is the wife of the man that was murdered. I am a co-host for the Witchlands Read Long, which was created by Jade from Jadery Reads, where we're reading the Witchland series by Susan Dannard. And I have all of 
of the core books in the UK hardback, but I didn't have Sight Witch, which is the 2.5 installment. This does not come in a hardback that matches the UK hardbacks. It's really frustrating. So I just picked up this paperback copy, which I actually really like because it's super floppy. But um, yeah, this is a novella. It's 200 and something pages and it follows the character of Ryber. It is also a prequel story that is the origins of Ryber and how she ended up in the main storyline and it also has quite a lot to do with the magic. I learned quite a lot from this one because I have read it but I also have a lot more questions and theories going forward so I'm excited to continue on with this series and see if I get any more answers. I feel like with every book in this series I'm just getting more questions. And the last one I bought new is the new Willow spin-off in the Buffy reboot series. I picked this up from Forbidden Planet when I was in Newcastle because I took a day trip out to Newcastle and I wanted to pick up something to kind of commemorate the day out and I saw this and could not resist. I think at the time that I picked this up actually it wasn't even out yet. I didn't realise. I just saw it and got it because I knew it was an installment that I didn't have. But the Buffy reboot is the modernised take on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So we still have all of the same actors that were in the show portrayed in the comics but it's in a much more modern setting. It's set in 2019. They have a few spin-offs now so there is the Angel series which then goes into Angel and Spike and they've just started Willow. I think they have a Faith one maybe coming as well. I'm not this far into the series yet so I'm not 100% sure but I just love the art style especially on the covers of these. They are absolutely stunning and Buffy is my favourite TV show ever and I'm very pleasantly surprised with what I've read of this reboot so far. For the gifts we have a couple of belated birthday presents from Cassie from the booktube channel Sassy Cassie which I will of course link down below. The first one is Sparrow by Mary Cecilia Jackson. Cassie thinks I'm going to really enjoy this because I love It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. I don't know too much about this because I am just taking it off Cassie's recommendation but it follows a girl who is a ballerina and I think it focuses on abusive relationships so content warnings for that. I also have One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston which Cassie pre-ordered for me. I surprisingly really enjoyed Red, White and Royal Blue. I gave it four stars. I didn't adore it but I did really really enjoy it and the synopsis of this one is definitely more intriguing to me because it has a little bit of a sci-fi twist. So from what I've heard about this, this one is a female female relationship but one of the people in the relationship is trapped on a train in a different decade. <laughs> all I know and I am going to be buddy reading this with Cassie very soon and of course a big thank you to Cassie for sending both of these my way. The rest of these are from my lovely patrons so thank you so much. The first two are Take a Hint Danny Brown which was gifted to me by Lauren and Actual Ave Ege Brown which was gifted to me by Beck. so thank you to both of you guys so much. I'm really really loving this series as you can see this one is my current read. These are the second and third books in the Brown Sisters series, the first book being Get a Life, Chloe Brown, and they are a series of adult rom-com style romances. They can be read as standalones, but the female main characters in all three of them are sisters, so it is kind of nice to like read them as a series, as the other characters make little cameos in each book. Take a Hint, Danny Brown follows Danny, who is a PhD student with commitment issues, and she asks the universe to give her a friend with benefits. The friend with benefits in question turns out to be a security guard who really loves romance novels and is searching for a happily ever after and he has had a massive crush on Danny for a long long time. Then one day during a drill in the university where they both work Danny gets trapped in a lift and Zaf rescues her and carries her out of the building. Loads of people record video footage of this and they end up going viral on Twitter so to help a non-profit organization that Zaf runs where he coaches rugby and also teaches the boys to embrace their emotions and how to deal with mental health. Danny and Zaf agree to enter into a fake relationship which does also have the elements of friends with benefits in there as well. Really really enjoying this one so far. Then next month I'm going to be reading Actual Ave Each Brown and I don't know too much about this one yet but I believe that it has a enemies to lovers or like a hate to love trope in this one and I have been buddy reading this entire series 
with Simon from Savage Reads. The Wonderful Ash gifted me The Secrets in Shadow and Blood by Lana Pachersik. This is the first book in a spin-off from a fantasy romance series about fairy wolf shifters. The first book in that series is called The Longing of Lone Wolves and Ash did gift me the entire series up to date for my birthday. But this has just been released and this one is a vampire spin-off. That is all I know about it. I've not really looked into it too much in case there's any kind of spoilers for the wolf series that I haven't read yet. But a lot of people in my Patreon Discord have been really, really loving this series. So I am very excited to get to it. The lovely Harry surprised me by sending me the Skyward Hardback by Brandon Sanderson. Thank you so much. So this one is the first book in Brandon Sanderson's young adult sci-fi series that follows a young girl called Spencer who desperately wants to be a fighter pilot. However, her father was a deserter and the shadow of that has loomed over her and her family ever since it happened around 10 years prior to the start of this story. So the main book really focuses on the flight academy and Spencer trying to achieve her dreams and fighting back against everybody who really doesn't want her to be in this situation. I really, really loved the first book in this series. I didn't love the second book as much, but the third book is released later this year and I'm hoping that I enjoy that one a little bit more. So I do own this one in paperback and the reason for that is that the hardbacks went out of print. However, I do believe they have just reprinted the first book in hardback, which is how Harry managed to get a hold of this for me. And the final gift is from the wonderful Megan. So thank you so much. And um, that one is Heartstopper Volume 4 by Alice Oseman. This one is a young adult contemporary webcomic that is bound up like once a year into these print formats. It is a very quick comic with very large frames. These don't take very long to read at all. And it is just a very sweet male-male relationship between these two boys called Nick and Charlie. Charlie is openly gay. However, Nick doesn't even realize that he has feelings for people of the same gender as him until he meets Charlie and they become friends. This is a kind of prequel story to another one of Alice Oseman's books that focuses on, I think it's Charlie's sister. And in that book, they are already in an established relationship relationship so this is just like a really cute really sweet heartwarming light-hearted male male romance comic it's just really really cute it does deal with some heavy topics throughout the volumes like mental health and also eating disorders but overall the feeling of this comic is very very sweet and then the final stack of books we have to talk about today are my subscription box books i think all of these are the april and may books and i don't know as much about some of these as i do about all of the ones that we've gone through because i didn't choose them for myself so the first two are from the april book box club the first one being The Outlaws of Scarlet and Brown by Jonathan Stroud. I don't actually know too much about this one at all but I believe it is a dystopian western which is an interesting combination and I'm sure that I'm going to give this a try at some point. And the second one was The Supreme Lie by Geraldine McCurran. McCurran? McCoffrian? And this one I am slightly more interested in than this one but I'm struggling to grasp the synopsis so I am just going to read it to you. It says 15 year old Gloria is made to Ophelia's ty tyrannical head of state, Madame Suprema. When the country is hit by unprecedented flooding, Madame Suprema runs away, fe fearing she will be blamed for the crisis. To cover up this cowardly act, Gloria is made to step into Madame Suprema's shoes and is thrust into a world of corrupt and desperate politicians. As Gloria becomes aware of the forces toying with her every move, she must take decisions that could save or end thousands of lives, including her own. The fairy loot book for April was The Prison Healer by Lynette Noni. This one is a young adult fantasy that follows a healer who works in a death prison. One day the rebel queen turns up at the prison's door and she's very sick and she has been sentenced to trial by ordeal which is essentially a death sentence and reserved for the deadliest criminals but the main character doesn't think that the queen can make it through so she agrees to take her place. The fairy loot edition has a alternate cover. We also have foiling under the cover and under dust jacket art and stencil sprayed edges. The fairy loot book for me was Witches Steeped in Gold by Shannon Smart. I absolutely adore this edition. It has a very, very pretty dust jacket. Once again, with foiling. And I love 
the underdust jacket art for this one. And this one is a young adult fantasy again that follows two girls who should be enemies, but they join up to defeat a common cause together. While we're on the subject of which is steeped in gold as well, that was also the Owl Crate book for April. I'm probably going to give one of these to my best friend Ryan after I've read it. If I adore it, I'll keep both. But if I don't need two copies, I will be giving one to Ryan. And this one, once again, has absolutely beautiful under dust jacket art and a little bit of foiling under the dust jacket as well. The Owl Crate book for me was The Ones We're Meant to Find by Joan He. This one is a young adult sci-fi and it is set in a futuristic setting like on earth where we have like androids and eco cities and it says towards the end of the synopsis after a series of man-made disasters rock the planet Casey must decide if she's ready to use science to help humanity even though it failed the people who mattered most to her so I'm really looking forward to reading this one actually it was on my radar and it sounds like it's going to be a little bit different to especially like the usual subscription boss book so I really want to give this one a try. The Illumicrate book for April is In the Ravenous Dark by A.M. Str Strickland. This one has stunning stencil sprayed edges and also really beautiful end papers. I'm really really intrigued about this one especially because of what it says on the back which is she loves a princess, she's bound to a warrior, she must portray them both. But this I think is a mix of mythology and like necromancy. It definitely has something to do with death and death magic but it's set in a world where magic is rare and it says in the synopsis that to save the living and the dead the main character has to start a war between the land of the mortals and the underworld. And then the final book for this haul is The Jasmine Throne by Tasha Sori, which was the Illumicrate book for May. Once again, we have stenciled edges on this one. This one follows a princess who has been locked up in an ancient temple that was once the source of powerful magic and one of her maidservants, who I believe is the priestess. I think that this is a female-female relationship. I have to say I am quite excited for this one, but I started Empire of Sam by Tasha Sori. I read it when I was ill at some point and I did DNF it because it was due back at the library and I couldn't focus enough to read it before it was due and I wasn't super invested in the story at the point that I was at which I think was about a third to halfway through but I'm willing to give Tasha Sori another try and if I do like the Jasmine Throne then I will probably return to Empire of Sand when I'm in a better headspace and not sick and try and finish that off. So there you guys have it those are the 28 books for my summer-ish book haul. Please let me know down in the comments if any of you guys have read any of these books and what you thought of them. Let me know what your favourites are and um, if you've read any of the newer releases or subscription box books and which ones you would recommend and even which ones you didn't enjoy quite so much. But aside from that guys please don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you wanna. If you head to my description box you'll find links to my Goodreads, Instagram, and Twitter if you'd like to follow me on any of those as well as a link to my bookish candle website, the Instagram for that and a 10% off discount code. So that's it for me today guys bye oh you bite your friend like chocolate you say you will go where nobody knows with guns in under our petticoats we're never gonna quit it no we're never gonna quit it no